in relation to incomes, home prices have never been higher. We have never seen an equity bubble that is this high, where it's in relation to the economy, not just the price of equities, but in relation to the economy, never been higher. We've never seen credit spreads this narrow before. We've never seen this amount of credit card de- um, uh, corporate debt, CLOs, private um, credit. So there's massive distortions all existing together. I, I don't think we're in a recession yet, but we are tending towards that direction. Inflation has been more tame in the past few months, and that has made financial markets hopeful the Fed might cut its key interest rate later in the year, potentially providing some relief on mortgage rates. There is a bubble trifecta, real estate, bonds, and stocks. And every one of these markets is at record levels by any measure. If these bubbles pop, this could be a wipeout for the markets, says portfolio manager Michael Pento. The U.S. housing market is presenting a puzzling scenario. On one hand, the national median sales price of existing homes has reached a record high of $419,300, reflecting a 5.8% increase from last year. This is on top of a staggering 51% jump in just five years. The S&P 500 rose to a fresh record as artificial intelligence, Darling NVIDIA, continued its march to new highs, topping Microsoft as the most valuable public company. The broad market index added 0.25%, while the Nasdaq composite inched up 0.03%. The tech-heavy index also closed at a record. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 56.76 points, or 0.15%. The size of the Treasury market has quintupled since the financial crisis, an indication of how much the U.S. has turned to debt financing over the past 15 years. Analysts warn that if the U.S. floods the market with Treasury bills, it could jeopardize quantitative tightening, the Fed's drive to shrink its balance sheet, which is one of the main struts of the central bank's push against inflation. The risk is QT is going to have to end sooner than expected, said J.P. Morgan's Barry. Pento questions the effectiveness of these measures, suggesting that instead of lowering long-term interest rates, they might actually cause yields to rise and bond prices to fall, worsening the housing market and other economic conditions. He concludes that, unlike previous crises since 1987, there may not be an easy way out this time. Now, let's break down what this all means, of course, with Michael Pento. Before we continue, let's take a minute to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more timely updates. You know, I, what my plan is to do this. I'm going to follow the model that I built over decades. It's called the inflation deflation economic cycle model. And it, it allows me to protect and profit from recessions, bear markets, liquidity crises, depressions, which I think we could have a truncated sojourn in um, in the near future. That, that's the salient risk there because we have, a, we have, why do I say that? Because I, because um, I'm a Cassandra who likes to use hyperbole. That could be, I mean, you might, some people might think that, or do I see, I see concurrent bubbles that we've never had exist, you know, concurrent means existing at the same time. We've never had them. We've never had a bubble in real estate and a bubble in the equity market and a bubble in credit like we've had all at the same time. Think about, you know, the year 2000. It was, a, it was not even a really an equity bubble. It was mostly a NASDAQ bubble. And then in, in, in the aughts, 2006, 2007, we had a real estate bubble. It wasn't really an equity bubble. Um, but now you have a bond, stock, and real estate bubble, all existing concurrently, and they're at record proportions. I mean, we've never had a home price to in- income ratio this high, never. Now, I understand that the home ownership construct is better than we don't have the liar loans. We don't have 110% loan to value ratios. That's a lot better. But what we do have this time is we have 20, 25% of all homes, single family homes owned by investors. Even though they own the home outright or they have a very little mortgage on it, it's still a home that they don't need to live in. It's rented out. So if you have a recession and you have the unemployment rate tick up and the stock market starts to fall, they will be looking for liquidity from these homes that are falling in value that are no longer rented because your renter stopped paying you and you need liquidity. So they will, the, the inventory, the shadow inventory can come on the market almost to the extent that it did in the, in the, in the subprime crisis. And then you have the home prices that have never been higher, not just nominally speaking. I always like to look at the ratios because, look, you have to look at everything in, in relation to 
something else, GDP or incomes. Well, in relation to incomes, home prices have never been higher. We have never seen an equity bubble that is this high, where it's in relation to the economy, not just the price of equities, but in relation to the economy, never been higher. We've never seen credit spreads this narrow before. We've never seen this amount of credit card de- um, uh, corporate debt, CLOs, private um, credit. So there's massive distortions all existing together. So you could make a cogent argument, well, this is going to be a very big wipeout in the stock market and in the asset, in asset prices. And by the way, that's, that would be healthy if you, that's what recessions are supposed to do. They're supposed to reset. It's a cathartic cleansing, purging of all the, ex, ex, you know, the excesses. So I'm, I actually hope that happens. It would be the best thing for this country. The question is, what does Jerome Powell and, and, and Janet Yellen do about it? I'm afraid they might go back to ZERP and they might go back to QE. They might go back to helicopter money. But if they do so, this is the first time they're going to be doing it when, A, the, the nation is starting off as an, an insolvent state. We've never had jet, debt to GDP this high. We've never had trillion dollar deficits before. And they'll be doing th- th- that uh, QE and ZERP, or, uh, doing that action to reliquify the money markets. When inflation is way above their target and has already wiped out the middle class. So, I mean, do you, do I, am I sure? Are you sure that when the Fed announces we've gone back to desert and we've launched a QE and helicopter money is coming from the Treasury? Are you sure long term rates go down? I am not sure. Long duration bonds could actually go up in yield, down in price. And if that's the case, then what you're doing isn't going to save the housing market, right? It's not going to save much of anything. It's going to it's just going to exacerbate the condition. So I don't. In other words, I'm trying to say there's not an easy out this time, like there was every other time since 1987. The rapid advancement of artificial intelligence technology is reshaping the job market, posing significant risks to various professions. According to a recent report by Goldman Sachs, AI tools could impact 300 million full-time jobs worldwide, leading to considerable disruption in the labor market. As businesses increasingly adopt AI to improve efficiency, certain jobs are more vulnerable to automation. More than half, 61% of large U.S. firms, plan to use AI within the next year to automate tasks previously done by employees, according to a survey of finance chiefs released Thursday. On a more speculative note, Pento humorously remarks that concerns about economic downturns might be alleviated by artificial intelligence taking over jobs, with people receiving government checks in digital currency while their privacy and autonomy diminish. He anticipates a recession by the end of the year and foresees potentially drastic measures being taken to manage future economic challenges. Let's shift our focus to a video. So the economy is clearly slowing. Um, it's not my prediction anymore. It's a fact. If you look at initial jobless claims, uh, the highest four-week moving average since se- September 2023, um, continuing claims up up by 15,000, that moving average is also, four-week moving average is also the highest in, in quite a while. Um, if you look at Philly Fed that came out today, if you look at retail sales, uh, great disappointments. Um, if you look at uh, pending home sales, they're all not <laughs> anywhere near as projected. They're all falling well short of the mark. So um, I, I don't think we're in a recession yet, but we are tending towards that direction. And uh, on the other side of the coin, you look at, you know, the markets, if you look at NVIDIA, it's adding the market cap of McDonald's every day. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you have a, a, a very narrow rally like this, it tends to mask what's going on underneath. For example, would it surprise you if I told you the equal weight, Russell, uh, I'm sorry, the equal weight S&P 500 is up 4%? That includes NVIDIA. It just doesn't overweight it because of its market cap. It equals it. If you look at the Russell 2000, that's down year to date. There's 2,000 stocks there. So um, lots of cross currents, but the economy is clearly weakened, weakening. It's being masked by um, what's going on with the AI phenomenon and NVIDIA. All such narrow rallies have failed miserably in the past. You look at the Nifty 50, or if you look at the dot-com uh, phenomenon, but this is really a rally net that's just like one stock. <laughs> so uh, the, the market's very narrow. The economy's clearly weakening. Uh, if you look at things such as financial conditions and credit spreads, 
and that's what I would really look towards to let me and my investors know when we need to get short, net short in the portfolio. They're still quiescent. But this data is coming out, that's coming out just over the past month or so is really starting to lend credence to the fact that we are slowing towards a recession. I think it's inevitable that we have a recession by the end of this year. Oh, don't worry, it'll be fine because you could all be replaced by artificial intelligence. We'll have digital human beings doing your job and you'll just sit home and wait for your government check to arrive in digital currency. They'll just deposit it in your bank account. And everything will be fine. You'll have uh, you just sit back and watch um, TMZ and uh, reruns of Jerry Springer, and your intelligence will go down, your autonomy will go down, your your privacy will be removed, and you'll be fine. What's to worry about? Doesn't that sound wonderful? Look, AI AI is is a very disruptive uh, technology. It's I'm sure it'll boost productivity in the long run, uh, but it could be very disruptive to the labor force, and uh, I. I I, they tried it, at, you know, post COVID helicopter money. Um, I think they'll do it. They'll, I think they'll be forced to do it again. And I think they'll they'll also have to take complete control of your currency because interest rates are going to have to be negative in real terms for a very, very long time, maybe even in nominal terms for a very long time. And that requires paper currency, physical currency to disappear for them to accomplish that task. Eh, see what's to worry about for now. Bosses and employees remain concerned about the cost of living and inflationary pressures. The CFO survey found that inflation is the number two concern for the next year among U.S. chief financial officers, behind only the related concern of interest rates and monetary policy. Most CFOs, 57%, expect the price of their products to increase this year at a faster than normal pace. So what's driving these trends? We value your thoughts, so feel free to share them in the comments. If you found this content valuable, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay informed. Thank you for being part of this journey with us.